crazy just how many people tell me about certain shows I've never heard about that traumatized them. And yet somehow, even though there were a lot of requests for this one show, this show isn't really that popular. We're of course talking about the UK's Trap Door, a claymation cartoon that I literally watched one afternoon while spamming Duty Roulette on FF14. No, seriously, the entire series is on YouTube right now, and it's like two hours long. You literally have no excuse to just not watch the show. Seriously, why wouldn't you? It's a show that focuses on dark fantasy and comedy, though while it is aimed at children, the show is not shy to show some truly terrifying shit and even jump scaring the audience every now and again. It's actually pretty crazy what they were able to show, like, I don't know, the worst we ever got was Courage the Cowardly Dog, and sure, that got some real good scary monsters there, but have you seen these bastards? Well, anyways, the show takes place within a castle, and only in this castle, save for the finale where we'll get to in a bit. The castle is inhabited by monsters, though they're not all that terrifying. We have Burke, a blue blobby creature who's an absolute prick. No, seriously, he's super brutal and evil. Like, there was this one episode where this bird plant thing helped them out with these annoying flies pestering them all the time, and then after it was done eating them, Burke sacrificed the poor bird to the thing upstairs, which I'll talk about in a minute, but what a dick move. He literally just feeds it to him. Asshole. Then we have Boney, a talking human skeleton who's a stickler and sort of a worry word, sort of the straight man to all the chaos happening around and the token buzzkill. And then there's Drut, a stupid ass spider. Okay, he's, he's kind of funny. The show's titular trapdoor is the center of all their worries, as per every episode, a horrible monster often leaves the trapdoor to torment or to annoy our three protagonists. And yeah, that's about the gist of the series. Burke sometimes opens the trapdoor and lets something loose, or other times the monster just comes out by itself. Oh yeah, and then there's the thing upstairs, I forgot to mention that one. An ominous off-screen monster that shouts at the cast of the characters whenever he's really hungry or just really grumpy. He's been basically the head of the castle and always demands things. I find him to be one of the most terrifying creatures out of all of them, maybe just because of the fact that we don't see him. Sure, there's the obvious scary monsters in the show, but there's something more ominous about monsters you just don't know exist. Kinda like how some of us were just scared of the Boogeyman. Even though there were no photos or pictures of that Boogeyman or how he looked like, for most of us, we were scared of the implications of what he could have looked like, and our wild imaginations filled in the gaps. I guess in a way, the thing upstairs is just the Boogeyman himself. Anyways, back to the show. Even though there isn't much to be said about the plot, I mean, it, each episode was like five minutes long also, so you're not getting anything really fleshed out in just five minutes, but make no mistake, it is a ride and a half to watch nonetheless. But of course, you might be wondering why this is on Traumathon. Well, if you haven't already seen it, these monsters are fucking horrifying sometimes. Yeah, they can be just borderline annoying more than they can be deadly or actually a threat to the main characters, but seriously, these are some scary creatures. And even though it's played up for laughs sometimes, especially when just Burke just beats the shit out of them, the fact that they look this scary in the first place is just cruel. I mean, this is made for kids, obviously, and I don't know, just stumbling upon this thing? I would absolutely piss my pants. Maybe that was the point. I mean, what an innovative idea that was, to have comedy spliced with horror. The only place you'd really see that is with Scooby-Doo. But even then, Scooby-Doo is just straight comedy. But this show doesn't give a shit. It will scare the ever-living fuck out of you, because the monsters are just made that way. Sometimes they don't even have to be threatening. Sometimes they just exist, and they can be really creepy. Nonetheless, I caught this show when I was an adult, as in like two weeks ago, and I really loved it. A ton. I just like how it's basically just a slice of life cartoon that so happens to take place of the lair of horrifying monsters. 
Burke just does his daily routine of serving the thing upstairs, either by cooking or cleaning or bathing the monster himself, while Boney mouths off in the background and Drut just... I don't know, farts. <laughs> I think we're really spoiled by beautifully written cartoons nowadays, and that's not a bad thing. Sometimes we just sort of forget. A good cartoon doesn't always need a good plot. Sometimes it can just be as simple as a concept. The world can be spooky and abnormal, but then you have these characters that are really down to earth and can guide you through this chaotic world. And honestly, that can just be enough. Though I won't lie, I think fleshing out the world would have been kind of cool, but it's a fairy tale world. And I think the charm this show oozes compensates for the lack of narrative. And what's funny to me is how improvised a lot of this show feels. It's obvious that much of the script was written after the animation was already done, so we get a lot of these awkward moments where Burke just sort of ad-libs his lines. Like in the first episode where a bunch of tentacles just come out of the trapdoor and he just says, It's bonking time. I love me a good bonking. Right. It's bonking time. Like that's just the dumbest, that's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but it's just charming nonetheless. The sets were also incredibly colorful and really well made, and much of the animation, albeit rough by today's standards of claymation, is still really wonderful to watch. I mean, back in the 80s, you didn't really have much variety when it came to cartoon. Everyone during the time was just a Hanna-Barbera clone. At least that was the case here in the States, I don't know how it was outside. So seeing a show be ambitious and try out claymation regularly, I mean, I know for a fact I would have loved this show to bits if it ever came out of the UK. Aside from it traumatizing kids back in the 80s and whenever this was syndicated later on, the show is incredibly imaginative, both in set design and in design of the monsters themselves. Even with the limited amount of time and budget that they had for the claymation, they still figure out how to do some weird, wacky, out-of-the-box sort of ideas sometimes. Also, even though this show doesn't have any real concrete narrative, I do find it interesting that both Season 1 and Season 2 have fake-out serious endings. No kidding, Season 1 ends with Burke being fed up with the entire castle and all the bullshit going around and decides, hey, enough is enough, I'm out of this joint. Only, of course, for that episode to have a stinger at the end that reveals, oh yeah, look, Burke didn't really leave after all, so, uh, yeah, that was pointless. And season two is even worse. It's the final season they ever had, and they actually kill off one of the reoccurring characters that I assume a lot of people really loved and his name is Rog. I'm assuming people loved him just because he's a huge lovable oaf. Despite him being clumsy and slow, he's a gentler giant compared to the other monsters that come out of the trap door. And occasionally, he does help Burke out. He's just a nice guy overall. But at the end of the whole series though, Rog is killed off after a confrontation with another monster of equal size and infamy. Man, that's really sad. Honestly, just kind of a tragic way to end the series. Oh, but wait, let's just just wait after the credits. Oh, here he is. Rog is completely fine somehow. I don't know. Oh, and then it ends with a jump scare. Honestly, these two endings are just pretty cruel. It, it sort of teases that the showrunners wanted to go a different direction but weren't confident enough with going either direction at all. Well, it doesn't matter now. Because in my own head canon, everyone was killed by the big red monster after this episode. Which makes sense, because the series ended afterwards. 40 episodes, and it's a trip. Seriously, I can't recommend this highly enough. It's a real treat of a show that I wish made it overseas. Sadly, though, it seems to have only garnered a cult following. Not much happened afterwards, and not much has happened since. I wouldn't want this show to be rebooted anyways, as I feel like it might have been ruined. Not many production companies have the patience for stop motion nowadays, so it'd likely come back in 3D. And that might stiffen a few things. Though there is some hope. I mean, people have mastered the art of faux stop motion and faux claymation in Blender, for example. So what's to say they'll do a poor job? As long as there's some love and respect for the original source material, then I'm pretty sure they'll do fine. But this is just speaking in hypotheticals, honestly. I highly doubt this show will ever come back, but who knows? Renewed interest has a funny way of affecting otherwise unknown media. For now, it's all available right here on YouTube for free. So do yourselves a favor, give yourselves a treat, and check out a piece of your childhood you've been missing.